No, oh, it's live. It's live. Okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Blake Hernandez here and Ashley Bassini. And we have a beautiful white poodle to do a very nice salon trim on. So, um, Ashley here is going to do all the grooming, and I'm going to talk you through what she's got going on. And you're going to see what it's like to keep up a nice poodle that comes in regularly. You know, she's not in a lot of coat where it's going to get matted. You can tell there's already a pattern on this dog. We're just going to show you how we keep a dog that's lacking a little um, refinement and make them super pretty. So, are you ready, Ashley? Yes, let's right. do it. So make sure to ask any questions and we will do our best to answer you. Okay? okay. We're ready. So what you're noticing is that she's going to start at the back of her dog because with any trim, you want them to be framed inside of their little shape. And we know poodles have a square frame. So she's going to bring in that back end. She's using a two guard over a 30 blade. And she picked up the dog's foot. You want to show them that, Ashley? Yes. And started right there in that bend of stifle reverse and where that ischium bone is up by the booty she avoids so that you can scissor it later i'm not seeing any comments guys you have any questions so she's using that same two guard up by the shave work on the front of the dog and that's helping just blend that transition line so that you can really make the neck light, nice and elegant. And what shampoo did you use on this? Um, fashion Pet Spa. Dog Fashion. Dog Fashion. Dog Spa. Fashion it's a new Spa. Product, so we just started using it, and it's absolutely fabulous so far. Pet Store Direct. Pet Store Direct sells it, and just so you know, this dog has like very soft hair, so uh, it's a lot of work to get it to a point where it's nice to put a finish on. So uh, there you go with that. The Clipper is a Wall KM cordless. So those were released about two years ago, I think now. Um, and the nice thing about those Wall KM cordlesses is that you can plug them in and use them corded if it's run out of battery life. So where are you starting on your dog right now, Ashley? So it's right where you would want their withers to be. So that's typically a 45 degree angle from their breastbone, and that should be where their withers are, but not all poodles are really built that way. So we kind of have to give the illusion that this is where the withers are. Mm -hmm. So we are doing the top one, which is just above the rib cage. Mm -hmm. So right there from where, you're, where you want the withers, she's just knocking off all that hair so you have a, a tighter top line. And uh, that also adds length of neck. So this is a little trick that she likes to do to wow look at that so this is just a nice transition that helps me blend um, the back into the crest a little bit more so it's a lot smoother and it's easier for me instead of using the scissors to just kind of transition and, it a little more exactly and watching people work in this area a lot of times it's almost like two different lines crash and burn right at the shoulders and so this is a really nice way to make it seamless using that same one guard but reverse and skim it up into where you want your crest. They said they love your smock. You want to talk about your smock? Uh, so this is a Jody Murphy smock. Um, it's a little bit different than others because it's a little bit more slim fitting um, for the smaller, um, more petite girls instead of having constricting baggy smocks. Yeah. So sometimes uh, those baggy smocks, if they, you know, just like a scissor, if it doesn't fit you right, you know, you got to got to see what works for you and Ashley's got a nice little bod so <laughs> so are you using the yellow guard now so yes I switched to a, a an oak comb and I like to kind of try to take off a lot of this excess hair because when you're grooming in a salon it's hard to do a lot of scissor work so it's nice to try to just knock off whatever hair you can and I'm just going right down the leg. So to review, we've used a two guard on the back and the front of this dog to really nail them in. Yes. We've used a orange guard, which is a half inch, 
on the top line to uh, bring it in a little tighter and lengthen the neck. But now we have the 5 8 clipper guard, which is the yellow O-comb. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna take down all that bulk on the body, but also take down the thigh without making it look pinched or weak. Mm -hmm. So we're just leaving, leaving little bits of hair where it's needed, but very easily. You know, using guard combs makes it all very easy. So you notice how she has the ear up nice and tight, and she just brings that line all the way down to her shoulder, skimming off and keeping that line parallel. It's just to cut down on um, the scissoring time, and it's just locking it in a little bit more, so I don't have to do as much. And I try not to take anything from the crest right here because I like to try to blend it all off. Mm -hmm. So I'm just being very conservative with what I'm taking right here. So right when you get all that off the jacket, notice how she's using that same clipper guard, but in reverse from the last rib cage into the deepest part of the chest. So she, right there, she was just touching that last rib to make sure. Now, poodles have a waist, oops, but they don't have a very super tiny wasp waist. So right now, she's taking off a lot of bulk in that area, but not digging in and touching the skin. She's just kind of floating it over that tuck up so that you have a waist, but still have strength to your back and your rear end. So now that I have the dog pretty much blocked off, I like to save the tuck up for the end. Uh, I definitely like to try to do the back of the dog and the front of the dog first, just so we can kind of get it more square. So um, I'm just gonna scissor up a little bit more to tidy up the back and the front, and we do the front and back of the legs last, just to try to kind of put it all together. So don't mind her. A lot of times when you scissor, even the best coats, it takes uh, two or three go rounds at least. I would say for pets, two or three. When we're in the contest ring, I mean, we go around that dog as many times as we can. Um, but she left that area right by the butt, the ilium to ischium bone, which is the pelvic bone that shapes the back end of your dog. She left that so that she can make it a nice soft angle and not make it too pointy like you normally see people get exaggerated into so she's just softening up those lines in the back we could use some more questions guys i know we're being super thorough so you just don't have any right So I'm just cleaning this line up right here by the tail, and I'm tr um, trying to transition it up into the top line. And that's the nice thing about doing like a one guard over the top line is that you still have the ability to take it tighter when you're doing the tail set right over those ilium bones, which are the little pointy ones that sometimes you feel on the back of a skinny poodle. Um, when you leave that half inch, you can still scissor over. Oops, you can still uh, scissor over this area to make it tighter, and that'll lift the bum a little bit. So with Sophie, her pin bones and her tail set isn't correct. So I am just trying to build her tail set um, with the hair. without it being too... Now that's a fancy bum, I'd say, for a pet. That's, that's got a lot of style. And uh, when we did the first, I mean, we haven't spent much time on this dog. We've been chatting away. So uh, this is definitely something that you can do when you set all those lengths with your clipper guards. It makes symmetry a lot easier and it just cuts down on how much you have to whittle through with your scissors. Scissor the inside of my legs before I do the outside. So the reason why is when dogs move, 
because you know we're always thinking about their standards and how they move and stuff and it's very common for them to pull their back legs together and kind of a single track so whenever you are trimming the back legs if you trim the outsides first and then go to trim the inside you could potentially have a very small narrow and weak leg and try to save it by leaving hair on the inside. So it's better to take the inside nice and tight so you can separate a pretty A-frame and then any style or length can kind of be compensated for on the outside of the leg. Okay, so once I have that pretty much set in. So she was directly behind the dog to do the parallel line but notice she moved off to the side so that she can wrap it around and make it a more three-dimensional image. So what I look for when I'm wrapping, if you have the dog standing straight, if you point your scissors to the front um, right leg, if you're on this side, it helps you wrap it instead of doing like solid lines. Right. So I just use the legs as a guard or as a... Um, Place to aim for. Yeah when I do this just so it helps me wrap a little bit better. So that kind of reminds me of like when I do miniature schnauzer skirts, I aim for, you know, not skirts, but underlines, I guess. Yeah. I aim the for sun, that center uh -huh. line. So you're just kind of aiming towards something that's always there so that you can keep that angle mm -hmm. um, similar from trim to trim. angles on poodles so I'm kind of doing more of a curvy look to the leg instead of more straight. So Just say it. She calls it a cheese puff. I, <laughs> so I kind of like to try to shave or not shave but shape the back leg like a cheese puff. Okay so if you look at it like this and imagine it orange it's totally a cheese puff. It's cheese puff right? <laughs> I'm very food motivated so I, I like my dog's legs to look like cheese it was the first time I heard the cheese puff thing, but it works for Ashley. That's all that matters. Okay, so I'm going to tidy this up a little bit. They are supposed to have... You want to clean off the table a little bit? Yeah. I can't see your cheese puff. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm going to do the cuffs really quick so it makes it a little easier for you to see. So I like to take my, um, this is an Artero Spectra, so there's only four blade settings on it. So I like to take it either do a 30 or a 40, and I pull all the hair down to the knuckle. And I just cut all this hair off. It's okay, Sophie. All the way around their pad. And when they set the foot down and you shake it, it has that nice bevel and you just have to kind of clean it up a little bit. And you don't have to have perfect scissor hands or perfect scissor coat or perfect scissors to do that. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to keep your blades in check and uh, be able to knock off that hair and set your lines. I use this trick too on any poodle. Then we're gonna move to the front of the dog. So notice she has her curves reversed. You know, when you're doing a straight line, you use a straight line. When you're doing a curved line, you use a curved scissor. Um. And then I'll take my curves normal just to kind of round this off. Again, I, I like to think of it as a cheese puff. So I really like that nice round look that it gets and I don't want to stand in front of the camera mm. so okay. same thing very cheese puffy very cheese puffy and then um, I'm gonna go to the front and yeah. then I'll show you how I get the knee to make it even more puffy, even more puffy. Um, so I already took a one comb I don't know if he mentioned it um, or a two comb to try to 
get the dog's legs under the chest. So she doesn't really have a lot of hair for the chest, so I wanted to make her look like she had one. And I, I skimmed a lot with this already with the um, O comb and the two comb. So I'm just gonna take my chunkers and try to blend the chest into the legs. There's no harsh lines. A good reference for when you're standing at a profile of a poodle is where their ear is. It should, the front leg should be set behind that ear. Okay, so if your ear, if your leg looks like it's coming right out from underneath the ear, your front is too straight. So you want to push it back underneath the dog so you have that same overall outline. So I like to stand behind the dog and go down like this. And same thing, I just kind of imagine there's something um, like across from the dog and I use that to help me wrap because the dog is supposed to be really elegant. So you don't really want a whole bunch of harsh lines. So the more you're wrapping, now this dog was already in pattern but it's i mean it's important to remember they're still that doesn't mean we don't do a lot of grooming there's a lot of hair coming off this dog you know the shape is there but everything needs trimming trimming so when everything needs trimming you're still redoing the entire dog the joys of a curly coated dog is you know when it's hairy in one place it's hairy all over so again i'm going to do the cup so same thing 30, 40, whatever you're comfortable with, um, right to the knuckle, and around the pad. I just kind of shake the leg a little bit so I can see the bevel a little bit more. Okay. And I just tidy it up a little because there's not much to really do after that's done that does a lot of the work for you. And then same thing with the back legs. I like to do the inside of the leg first. So I just comb everything up. So for me, this is actually the opposite. I really like to do the outside of the leg first. I find that a lot of poodles um, elbow out or especially in movement they do. So I like to safely tuck away that elbow somewhere that I know it's not gonna bold or throw itself around and then uh, shape a leg from there. But everyone's, everyone's got their own style and Ashley is a very good groomer, so <laughs> I'm gonna go back and watch this. So then I'm just gonna tidy up So she's basically working on the front three quarters of this dog's leg, leaving the back of the leg uh, untouched until she really sees where everything is landing. Because that is the final determining factor in the length of dog is how much daylight you see between its legs and what that shape is. So she has really, really soft hair, yeah. um, like we were saying before, so trying to get a finish on her is pretty hard. In the salon, there I mean, there's really no rules anywhere. You can bend over and gnaw the hair off, and if it looks good, then you did it right. right. But <laughs> with soft hair, it is easier to do with chunkers and blenders and, and those texturizing things just because, I mean, it's like memory foam, and you'll see every scissor mark unless you've got... Unless you've got all the time in the world, a blender is a really easy way to uh, handle this type of coat. And I do um, use my chunkers um, backwards. Oh, we do totally have more questions. I don't know what the uh. heck is happening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you use any conditioner or finishing product? Yes. Um, I use finishing products more towards the end of the dog um, just because... I don't, this dog's hair is really, really soft, so I don't want it to get too curly with the amount of product that I'm using. 
Um, and then I, I like to use hairsprays and stuff when it comes to the floppiness up top. Um, but I do wait to use the finishing sprays when I'm doing finishing touches. Same thing. So I like to get the bulk off uh, without putting anything in the coat just so the comb glides a little bit easier and nothing starts to weigh or, or coat the hair. Um, but when I start needing to pull out every fine little fuzzy, that's when I start using product. And I'll use like an eye groom magic boost spray. It's a nice gel based formula. Um, what combs are you using, Ashley? Um, this was just a cheap little comb I got for $5 actually online. So, and I, it has been my favorite comb ever since. And then Holy crap. I also have my Artero comb that I got for I think like $35. So mm. it's just a fine tooth little comb. Um, but again, for bulk and stuff, I like to use my um, bigger tooth combs. Yeah, right. Um, and then I eventually move on to using the smaller, finer tooth combs. So she was skimming uh, when she was going from the body to the neck uh, on the reverse. Carrie Hesher says, go Ashley. <laughs> okay, um, so now that my body is pretty much set, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the tuck up. And she really doesn't have, I think she has more on this side than she did on the other yeah, side. So I, I agree. have to make it match <laughs> the other side now. Um, so because she didn't have a lot, um, I like to make it pretty tight in a, in a sense where it's close to the ribs just to make it look like she has more leg and it's a little bit more elegant. Um, so for that, um, I like to comb everything out first. And if you see, it's all choppy and not really nice right now. So I kind of put my hand under the dog. So the tips of her scissors are almost facing like towards the direction of where her body is and her hand is pitched underneath the dog a little bit so that you can give them a waist, but as you work up, you don't take away the strength and breadth of the back and that, you know, the thigh area. You can keep all that a little bit more in your control she says uh i miss the smock does she that she has so it's a jody murphy smock what what is this style called though do you remember i do not and uh if you feel like answering they want to know what they want to know what size you are um i think this is an extra small is it a small extra small <laughs> she thought size? she's a little extra but uh, she's not extra small okay okay so for the tuck up again um She's, she's a pretty hefty dog, so she's got some weight on her. Um, so I want to try to make this pretty tight just to make it look like she's not as big. Yeah, she doesn't have an overly refined uh, underline, and then she's also put on a little bit of pounds. Mm -hmm. So she, she needs to really nail the tuck up up there. So I don't like using my chunkers or anything near it because that is a really sensitive area. So I like to take either a 30 or 40 on your either 5 and 1s. It, it doesn't matter. And I kind of like to shape it with that. The highest point being where you left off um, at the end of the rib cage. And kind of just take all of this as close as you can. And you can always go back and tweak and I think that looks a million times better. So now she doesn't look as big and chunky and... So someone asked, is the top of the back shape? No, it is tight. It's about a half inch um, and then you can scissor over it, but the tail base is shaved. How long does it take her start to finish? So for me, um, prepping a dog like this takes about 30 to 45 minutes and um, Grooming a dog like this takes, you know, like 45 minutes to an hour and 15. So all in all, a dog that is regularly maintained on a six to eight week schedule in a modern trim that behaves like this uh, can easily be done in two hours mm -hmm. by yourself if you are being effective and uh, not whittling. Using the snap-on combs is a great way to just bulk through a lot of stuff. I think she got most of this done in like 12 minutes and then the rest is just is it <laughs> I think the rest was just fine tuning um, where it where it needs to go Lonnie says this is awesome I need to grow one of my dogs out for this trip mm -hmm. okay so um, we're gonna get back to the cheese puff leg um, so what I do is I like bigger fuller legs it just makes them look a little bit more um, elegant to me so what I do to set the knee 
I don't take any of this off just by scissoring it because I tend to eyeball it wrong. So I pick up the foot as if they were moving and I like to go from where I, I started the cup and I do a straight line to where the knee is and then I don't touch the knee and then I do a straight line going up to the tuck up and then when I put the foot down it's already a little bit more round so then <laughs> like I like that. <laughs> so um, then I go and I kind of fine tune it a little bit. So I just kind of set the pattern that I want. So um, what what scissors are you using today? I saw some Arteros and yes. Loyalty. Um, so these aren't Loyalty. So I have two Arteros or three Arteros. Um, the Alp 16s, the Alp 43s, and these are the Artero Black Straights. And then actually um, one of my favorites that I use all the time is my Foxy Roxy. Um, <laughs> the extreme curve. I have that one too. Yeah. So I wasn't sure if they were out yet. So I just they're not out yet. They're I didn't still want to use them. <laughs> they're still prototype. All the scissors that I use um, are Foxy Roxy scissors, uh, and we are working on a more extreme scissor that you guys will see soon. Um, but Ashley and I both have it because we are sneaky. They're fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to clean that up a little bit just to give it a little more. She's using the wall style um, clipper guards. Yes, you always lift up the tail and stack the dog whenever you're basically doing anything to make sure that you don't um, put it in the wrong place. And that includes doing the tail. I will never look at poodle legs the same way. They are forever cheese puffs. Am I wrong? Doesn't it look like I can't unsee a cheese puff now. <laughs> I always get weird looks when I say it, but it works. You know, it's just kind of there. And it helps you. you now, a, a lot of problems that I see with groomers when they do poodle legs, um, they always take the knee off. Yeah. So to keep me from kind of taking the knee completely, it just... So, um, Lonnie asks, what is the best way to make a pet room stand out from other pet rooms, in your guys' opinion? For me, I think the thing that pet groomers have a tendency to do when trying to do something fancy is leaving too much hair because they think hair is fancy. And I think what makes dogs more dramatic is taking things very tight mm -hmm. in some places. It really makes a dog more flashy. So having a really tight top line and a really tight bend of, you know, back of the leg and, and uh, upper arm return, it allows for everything else to stand out that much more. I like to call my dogs controlled fluff. When people are like, I want my dog fluffy, and they just want some indiscriminate poof, I'm like, no, I like controlled <laughs> puff. So uh, that's my opinion. What do you think, Ashley? Well, I think very similar. Um... A lot of people like to leave too much hair on the butt and everything, which a lot of people, they think they want. But you can actually make a dog look a lot more curvy by taking it tighter. Yeah. So I, I definitely like more tight tuck-ups. I like the tighter butt. I like the tighter chest. It just I think taking care of the sanitary issues is definitely um, the better way to stand out because a lot of people try to leave too much hair, and sometimes less is more. Yeah. You know? Um, hey Amber, what brand of bandanas are those up there? <laughs> Joanne Fabrics. Joanne Fabrics, y'all. <clears throat> okay. When I try the clipper thing to set the bevel, it always turns out crappy. Okay, so my advice to you is to do it with the clippers, but do it, you know, lower than you think it should be, just so that you can see what you're doing, and then just double over your work with scissors. And that'll give you a little bit more hair to work with. You'll still clear your path so you can see what you're doing, but um, you'll be able to put that scissor finish on it. Um, we went over the scissors. How many weeks do you need the hair out to grow, to clip a shape like this? So this dog, if it was shaved with like a 10, I would say it would take probably like eight months to get to this point from a complete, total, and utter shave down. Um, if it was in like a pet trim, like a five on the body and a zero on the legs, it would still take probably about four months, five months to get something yeah, really five, comparable. Five, four months, five, yeah. yeah, so, but generally, you know, this dog, just like any other dog, is gonna be in this haircut and this haircut will work for it for about six weeks. 
um, maybe eight weeks, just depending on your maintenance. I live in Texas. A lot of owners don't like the long look, so it's hard to practice. So when I was just learning how to groom, I had the same problem, you know, and what I did is on slow days, you know how people come in and they have like a half inch all over and they come every six weeks and they're great about coming every six weeks, but all they want is a half inch all over, no jokes, like that's all they want. If you have extra time, do it in a two on the body and scissor the legs and scissor the neck and scissor the head and then be like, okay, that was fun. And then shave it all with a one. And it's a great way to practice. You get an extra dog. The client gets what they want. You had extra time to kill. It's all, everybody wins. Um, the only thing is that I only recommend doing that on a dog that enjoys grooming or is good for grooming. You don't want to have a senior dog or a dog that doesn't like it on the table longer than they have to. So a lot of things that people tend to leave um, is elbow and hair in the armpit. Yeah. So I like to take my comb, and I kind of already did it, and I like to try to pull everything out as much as I can. So that way when they move, they don't have this hair that just kind of flops around. And I kind of take it the same way I did um, yeah. the tuck up, and I kind of try to blend it with my scissors at an angle to try to give her like a little bit more bigger when I do it. Yes, the tuck-ups are the same for male and female. It's just easier to find a male sometimes because they have a penis to yeah. help you guide. Um, but, Ashley, give, a, give your girl a fake penis. What? <laughs> <laughs> so if you have, you can always just do this and it helps you imagine if they have a penis if you use the penis for a tuck-up. So. I like to do um, two fingers in front of a penis when I use a male dog. Okay, so I pretty much have the body all done. So I'm going to go to the next part, which is going to be the crest, which is a very difficult part for a lot of people. <clears throat> so I always like to lift the ear out of the way. <coughs> Sorry. It's cold here in Florida. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Florida. I'm from California. I came to Florida to go jet skiing, and I get here, and it's 30-degree weather. What the heck? Um, so what is the cost of this service? So you guys, you guys need to remember to always price appropriate for what it costs to run your business. You know, I am a very good poodle groomer, and I do them all the time, mm -hmm. but I have very low cost to run my shop. So I don't have to charge an exorbitant amount. Then if you are in a salon in a swanky part of town in a really expensive you know, shopping mall, then odds are the rent is super, super high and you have to charge appropriately for everything, not just your service, but your space that you provide, the products that you use. So I can't tell you how much to charge, but I know that you should charge what it takes for you to make money. So right now, I'm just blending. Um, I like to either stand next to the dog just so I can see the blending, and then I like to come to the front of the dog just to make sure I'm not pinching the neck. So a lot of people have a problem going in too tight yeah. into the neck or leaving too much. So if you stand in front of the dog, you can see exactly what you're cutting and how thick you really want the neck. And then I like to kind of try to angle my scissors more towards the tip just to give them mm -hmm. a more rounded look. Mm -hmm. um, but when I'm doing this part, I like my scissors straight all the way down. And then there it's blended. You can't even really see where I have the glitter. So you can see this is the line that she's working on right here. And you can see how smooth that is. <laughs> You have to remember that in the standard, regardless of this dog being in a show trim or not, they still should have a long, elegant neck that slopes gently into well-laid back shoulders. That's what it says, and that's what she's doing. Okay, so next, before I touch any of this, I then like to set the length for my crutch. So how I learned to do this is I always try to move the dog's ears out of the way because I see people cut them all the time. So I lift the dog's head up so that they're facing the ceiling, and from their top knot down to my point of withers, you should, oops, sorry Sophie, she's dying. So this dog doesn't need much crest or top knot taken off, so she's just barely so, going to tip this just to make it smooth. 
Yeah, and it's just supposed to be a straight line. While the, the head is facing up. Yeah, that while way the when, head is facing. Mm -hmm. That way when she puts the head down, go ahead. You can see how it gracefully rises over the highest point of the dog's top knot. And then after that, all you really have left is um, little tidy <laughs> things. So I really like to wrap around right here at the base mm -hmm. and um, the top line just to make it look a little bit more. So a fault that dogs have is they, when their shoulders are more upright, they have a feeling of being like loaded at the shoulders, almost like they're wearing shoulder pads. And so by scissoring around that connective area, because we know this dog doesn't have the best shoulders, she's able to pack down around that loaded anatomy and make it a smooth, seamless transition even around the shoulders, even if they're a little loaded. And even if you don't know what a loaded shoulder is, think about like the fat dogs that we do with like wrinkles behind their neck. Like it's just a way of like taking something and smoothing it out when underneath it isn't smooth. That was a really good example actually. Boom. <laughs> for a second and then I do the same thing as I do with the front I kind of like to see um, as I'm trying to wrap it around that I'm not pinching too much so standing behind the dog you can really make it even yeah if you stand behind the dog it helps a ton with not pinching it like I if I feel like I'm getting in a little pinchy of a mood, I stand behind and like pick up the ears and look and see. Wh yeah, wh picking up the ears is always a really important. And she doesn't have much to take, so I don't want to keep whittling as much as I would love to. All right, why don't we close out and show them how to do this top knot? So for the top nine, sorry, You're fine. Um, I don't like a lot of hair hanging over the ears and she doesn't have a lot of top knot, it was just trimmed recently. So I like to either take my straights or curves, I'm more confident with my curves than my straights. And from the corner of the eye to the corner of the ear, I'll just try to clean this up a little bit always combing down because there's always those little sticky outy hairs that just kind of hide. I feel like the area around eyes on anything where you're mm -hmm. scissoring around the eyes, you like have to do it a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like there's always these little spider leg hairs that like to hide and recoil and you got to go in there and so pull them out. I like to try to pull everything down and I hold the dog's head straight. Let me move this. Um, I comb everything over because she has a flop knot. Mm -hmm. So I have to try to give the illusion that her hair is not floppy, but it all has to be even. So I try to connect the crest to the top knot. So that way the head's not pinched or yeah. it's not too floppy, which is a thing I see a lot. Um, and then I like to do this line right over the ear so that way it's not hanging over the ear. It's okay, Sophie. Perfect. And then same thing, I do it a couple times just because she has soft hair, mm -hmm. weak hair, and we, you know, we may load up dogs with lots of product um, for a show so that it can substitute that, but Generally, when I use styling sprays on dogs, I use them fairly topically. I don't use them down to the root like I would uh, to really cement in structure underneath. Mm -hmm. So I would just kind of line line spray in some like eye style, which is a very combable hairspray, and uh, it gives just a little bit more rigidity to your hair. Um, so I always wait to do the front last because at that point you've already set in your lines and if you do the front first it could affect mm -hmm. the rest of the top knot so I comb everything down as much as that would and I just trim on the bottom just so that they have visibility and then I slowly start to bevel up 
and I just do it a little so that way so this dog's face was shaved a little bit too high in between the the eyes um, but you definitely want to be at least from inside corner of the eye to the inside corner of the eye if not like one line of hair above that so that you can actually scissor to that line um, the curves that she's using are the Foxy Roxy Supply Company curves. Um, I don't think these are on the retail site right now, but they have lots of options um, for affordable scissors that are great for salon styling or even getting in the ring. Um, so to make sure all this is even, after I have set my lines, um, and it, it, I said um, they have already been groomed, so I'm only doing a little bit, but I comb everything even from the other side over and everything that hangs off I'll take my chunkers and I'll start my straight line and I'll lightly start beveling in up at the top and then I'll do the same on the other side see how that's sticking out a little and then that will when you comb everything up everything is pretty much already even uh for pets the shave between the eyes i just do straight um i don't really worry about it too much uh you can do the upside down v um on standards i wouldn't really recommend doing it on minis or toys because it's just so easy to take off too much um but i feel like a straight line is good enough mm -hmm. all right so ashley you want to give him a good stack And then don't forget about me. <laughs> Ask as many questions as you like and we'll come back and answer. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you.